Yo, what up guys, it's Artifacts, and today I want to show you something that I have never done before. We're going to look into Max for Life. Now, Max for Life, if you're like me, you've probably only used like one or two of the effects that are coming with the Max for Life library. I've used the Convolution Reverb and the LFO, and that's about where it stops. So recently I thought, let's go and look into the Max for Life device library and see what else is in there. And I downloaded one particular device called Yaa Group, and that is really powerful. It lets you link effects across your project file. That's going to sound probably a little bit weird, you don't really know what's going on or what I mean with that, but I'm going to show you in this video. Let's get to it. So I have a project file right here, it's made at 174 beats per minute, it's a drum and bass buildup. I made this quickly with some samples and some loops from sample packs, just to demonstrate how this plugin works. Now. I'm going to play this in a couple of seconds, but it might be a little bit loud because there's no automation, there's no filtering. We're going to do that in this video and I'm going to show you how you can use your group to do some really cool stuff. So let's get to it, I'm going to play this in 3, 2, 1. <laughs> So that sounds pretty good, but it is a little bit crowded. Now, that crowdiness, or however you want to call it, does make sense during the end of the build-up. That's where you want to have that to be super crowded and super, well, just in your face. You want to have build up the energy, right? But during the start, you don't want to have that, because otherwise it's not going to make sense as a build-up. You want to build things up. You want to build up the tension. So you can do that by applying filtering. Now, that is where your group comes in and where I really want to show you how that works. If this is a full track, right, um, there will be, let's say here I have a drum group and that drum group contains a whole bunch of tracks. Right now it only contains three, but let's say we're looking at a full track, this would contain a whole bunch more tracks. Let's say I want to apply filtering to only the kick drum and the snare drum track. If I put the auto filter on the, on the drum group track, it's actually going to affect all the tracks in that group. And that's not something I want. I want to apply it to only the kick drum and the snare drum. You can do that by routing the audio of the kick drum and the snare drum through a new audio track and putting the auto filter on that. But that, you know, it's doable, but it's still not really something I think is workflow friendly. It becomes even more a pain in the ass when, let's say, you want to apply the same uh, low pass filter to a track inside another group that's not the drum group then it's gonna be even more difficult you could still do that but it's really really a pain in the ass to set things up and it's probably gonna be even less workflow friendly so today I'm gonna show you how you can use your group to do these things really easily and it's really easy to work with so right here my uh, live user library I've got two effects called Ya Master and Ya Slave and these are the effects we're going to look at in this particular video so on the kick drum track I'm gonna apply a um, Ya Master effect so just let that load up it has to start max for life and then it will bring up this particular effect there it is so by default, this is what you get. Now that doesn't really look like much, right? But what did the, what this does is, since you have a master and a slave device, it will link these two up. So what you've got right here is, if I click this, you can see you have a couple of different groups that you can choose. So these are groups. Currently, it has group A selected, and right now it links to the EQ8, which I don't want, so I'm just going to unlink that, if I can. Yeah. So now it's unlinked, I hope at least. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put an auto filter after this one. And I have to go to my audio effects, right? Auto filter, put that after it. And I'm going to click to link this. So now it's linked to the auto filter, as you can see. So this auto filter is now linked to this Yamaster yeah, device. Now on the snare drum track, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go into my user library again and this time I'm gonna take the Yaa Slave and I'm gonna put this on the snare drum track 
So just let that load up. So there we have your slave. It basically looks exactly the same. You've got the groups as well. That's about what it is. Now we're going to go into the audio effects again. I'm going to take an auto filter and I'm going to link this one to the auto filter as well. So now I've got a slave and a master track. Um, to make things more simple to work with, we can group these. That's probably going to make things a little bit easier to work with. It's just going to make it really clearly that these two are linked together. So now I have the rack right here. I link these things up. As you can see, this is linked to this auto filter. And on the snare drum track, we also have an auto filter. But if we look at the settings of this auto filter on the snare drum track, we can see that it does nothing. You cannot change these settings because this is now being controlled by the auto filter that's on the kick drum track. So that means that if I now change something right here, so let's change the filter frequency. And if I now go to the snare drum track, that same thing has happened on the snare drum track. So that's really, really cool. Um, what I can now do is I can say I want to automate this. So let's say I want to automate this from about 120 hertz, I think. Let's start at 120. And let's open this up a bit. And I'm going to automate this, so I'm going to automate this over the entire buildup so that it comes up and then it just stays up there. So if I now play this, you are going to see that the automation happens not only on the kick drum track, but also on the snare drum track. So right now we are looking at the snare drum track, but where there is no automation on the track whatsoever. The automation is on the track that's above it, so l look what happens. Magic, right? So right now I've only applied one automation lane and I'm actually affecting two different tracks. So that's really awesome. Now what you can do is I can copy this. Let's say I want to apply this to another track. Let's see which one. This one maybe. Let's apply it to this riser as well. So I'm just going to paste it over here and see what happens. So there we have it. Let's see. As you can see, it automatically does the same thing. So right now, we actually have this auto filter that's on the kick drum track in the drums group that is affecting not only this track, but also the snare drum and this riser, which is in a completely different group. I can color that different so that you can see it, that these two are clearly different groups. But this particular track is now also affected by that same low pass filter and that's really cool so now we've already done quite a bit to it so now it should sound a bit better let's turn off the melodic elements still a little bit crowded let's put the same audio effect rack on this one the effects noise like that so now I should probably apply a little bit of EQing to this one because it's a little bit much. I think that's better. So now already So now we have something, uh, we have one automation lane and it's actually affecting four tracks across this project file. That's really, really, really interesting. Now I want to do some high pass filtering towards the end of this snare room. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
go into my user library again and I'm going to put a YAM master in here. So now what I want to do is I'm going to change the group to group B and I'm going to group this in a rack and I'm going to put an auto filter behind it. So I, I keep forgetting that. I'm going to go to your audio facts, take an audio, uh, an auto filter and let's put it after the new master device. So now I'm going to unlink that and link it so it's linked to the auto filter. Now I'm going to um, apply some filtering to this. So I want to apply a high pass filter. And I only want to apply that during the end of this part. So I'm just going to solo the snare for now. I think during that last part I want to automate that. So let's see. Probably during this part I want to automate this so that it goes up like that. Sounds right, maybe bend that a little bit. And we can then bring it down towards here again, so it does something like that. Now, that sounds good, but I want to apply that same to that same high pass filter to another track. Again, just like we've done before, um, let's see which one. I think I want to apply it to this noise layer as well. Um, yeah, I want to apply it to the noise layer. So on here, I'm gonna take a new audio effect rack, take an auto filter, just like we've done before, and I'm gonna set that to high pass. And now I'm gonna go into my user library, and I'm gonna take another yeah slave and put it right before the auto filter. So just like that, now what I want to do is I want to select a B on this one. So you can see immediately when I switch to B, it jumps to the same setting. So that's good. Now, if I play this, we should get the same movement on this one. And we do. You can hear that same high pass movement going on right there. So I spend a little bit more time on this right now. And um, I think this is actually pretty cool. I moved all of the master devices to one track that's at the top of the project and that track contains all of the automation. So that's really easy, makes it really easy to visualize what is automated. Every automation lane is just it in one track. Really simple. Now you can see that on this track I have all of these master effects. So I have five different ones, A to E. Um, I have four filters and a reverb. Now, on all of the other tracks, you can see I have slave devices. So I have slave A, slave B. This one has slave A and slave B. That one has nothing. Slave A and B, B, A, B, C. So you can really see I'm doing these things right here. See B and E, D and E, another E. So you can see I'm using these different ones. now. It's really great because if you look at these ones right here, if you click this, it'll actually show you which tracks are being affected. So that's pretty cool. I can see this one has, is, is affecting six different tracks. So those, those tracks are being affected. This one is affecting two tracks. Just those two. This one is affecting one for now, but I could add this to other tracks as well. And this one is affecting three. So those three. Now, you can see that I have the automation. All the automation is in this track, but during the buildup, all of these other ones will actually automate as well. Now, this is what I got after automating all of these different parameters. So I'm gonna play this in three, two, one. So you can see how everything is just moving while I'm actually just automating this. This is everything there is, but on all of these tracks, or pretty much all of these tracks, there is some automation going on because 
all of these tracks use the slave devices which are linked up to this master effects track. So that's really cool. I hope you like this. Um, if you want to check out this particular Max for Life device, there will be a link in the description below this video so you can check it out yourself. I personally really like it. There are a few bugs in there, I think, every now and then it just... It, it wants to link stuff that um, doesn't need to be linked. Um, it's a little bit of a pain in the ass, but it's pretty simple to work around. If something like that happens, just click here to unlink and relink it again, and it will basically just synchronize everything again. Um, that's just something to uh, work, you gotta keep in mind. If you find any bugs, you can report them to the creator of this Max for Life device, so he can actually look into it and see if he can find a fix. Now. If you like this, if you want to see more of this, comment, like and subscribe to this channel, that will help me a lot. If you want to have some samples or preset packs, like the ones you hear in my videos, go to my website which is www.artifacts-studios.com, on there you can find products I've made myself and if you purchase one of the products on my website, you're actually directly supporting this channel and helping me to keep this channel up and keep this going. So if you like this, comment, like and subscribe and I hope to see you back soon. Peace.